all over the world, people who were abused or neglected in childhood are procrastinating and they're thinking that they're the only one freezing up, getting stuck, struggling to get work done. It's all so common for people with childhood PTSD. And as long as you look at it as just laziness or a character flaw, you might be making your procrastination worse. Understanding that trauma in the past may have caused nervous system changes that make you vulnerable and prone to go into what's called freeze mode might just be what sets you free. My letter today is from a man I'll call Jacob, and he writes, Hi Anna, as far back as I can remember, I've always had the sense that everyone else is better than me. I've got my fairy pencil. I'm going to circle things I want to come back to on a second reading, but let's go through and see what Jacob's got going on. He says, they're better at sports, better at school, better at making friends or having friends. Just a general sense of always being not good enough. My childhood had one parent who was, and still is, explosive, self-centered, and wanted his children to be adults and not children. The other parent was a codependent also, just trying to survive. My older sister and I were set up in, to fail in most cases, or accused of being lazy, when in fact neither was the case. My family were the low-budget crew for the family business, and most things were hardly hired out. I can remember cutting the lot for our new home in the middle of July. The driveway is a quarter of a mile long. We moved all the brush and chipped it. The hardwood was dragged off by hand and stacked. Most of that time, we were all being yelled at, particularly me, for being lazy, he says. All right. Walking on eggshells was the daily ritual at my house, and never knowing who was going to get the wrath or why. We lived in a very rural area and there wasn't any there weren't any kids from school nearby and we weren't offered to um, be put into any activities with local kids at school it was a small community most of the kids were pretty pretty close knit because of sports church neighbors and so on so i always felt outside of things i spent the majority of my childhood alone or at least disconnected from most everyone this continued through high school and my only way out was to join the military then I did make friends and learned I wasn't as dumb and useless as I thought. When I came home, I went to work in the family business and all of my fire and go-getter personality seemed to be extinguished. Ah. There wasn't any effective guidance. I was just thrown to the wolves and why can't you do as well as XYZ or XYZ is kicking our butt and took, took this deal or that. At this point, about four years had passed and I had spent thousands on coaching, training, and so on, and just couldn't seem to make a go. I left the company, more or less, and moved 1,500 miles away, but continued to contract. Disliking it all, I decided to start my own business and continue part-time. However, after about 20 years, it was easier to earn money from the old business than to focus on my business. I've again spent thousands of dollars on coaching and more training and built systems and so on, and have monthly costs besides living bills. I know exactly what needs to be done, prospecting. I know I'm very skilled at it, very polished, and I need to do a great job when I fall into an opportunity. Most days I spend at my desk staring at my computer not doing work, not building either business and just watching as everything falls apart around me until some random deal falls in my lap two or three times a year and I survive. Nothing I've done up to now has helped me take the right actions. I'm blind to what is holding me back and regardless of journaling, hypnosis, screaming, forcing, I do not do what is necessary. This pattern has been an ongoing challenge for my entire adult life. I gave up on ever having a family due to poor choices and mates. So far, I've given up on my financial security and freedom, even though I know that I have been, for lack of a better word, blessed with talents and opportunities and have knowingly squandered them. Whoa. I just cannot see what the barrier is or how to address it. Okay, Jacob, I got you. Let's talk about this. So what you described about your childhood, but your youth and your young adulthood, where you were basically getting verbally abused all the time by your dad, your mom didn't do anything, that's enough to do some nervous system damage to a kid. And it was chronic and it was ongoing. And that's, that does, you know, that's where CPTSD comes from. Chronic, ongoing, intense stress from abuse or neglect um, in the case of kids. There are other reasons people get CPTSD, and I think you might have picked those up too along the way. 
But one of the ways that trauma manifests in us is we go into freeze mode. So there's these trauma reactions. There's roughly four of them. You could make a longer list. But fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. So we've all met the type who was traumatized in the past and they're just very full of conflict. They get into fights. They're always suing people. That's fight. Flight is running away, you know, just avoiding the whole thing. You came back. You're sitting at your desk. I think you might be in freeze mode. And that's a nervous system state. And there's very good news about this. The nervous system states are ones that you can work on and get some healing around. If it is freeze mode, I really encourage you to read more about it. You know, this has to do with your um, central nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system, which, which gets all freaked out when everything's upsetting. And then it calms down with the parasympathetic response. So another word for living in freeze mode is under functioning. There are some people who over function as a trauma response. You know, they just try to do everything. They'll work themselves to ex exhaustion. They get into perfectionism and then there's under functioning and under functioning is what you're talking about, where you sit at your desk, you're, you know, intending to get a lot done. You really need to work to get money, but you just can't seem to do it. You're paralyzed at your desk. So it's under functioning. It's not uncommon. So first of all, what really hurt my heart is when you just said, you know, um, I've given up on relationships and um, because of poor choices, which is what we do. That's another thing that can be healed, but that you've been blessed with talents and opportunities and have knowingly squandered them. You know, could we just consider that there's another thing going on that you didn't knowingly squandered them, that you actually tried your best but because of trauma you went through, your nervous system ha gets stuck sometimes and can't kick into gear. And what you need is a workaround to assist your nervous system to sort of start up again, to get going, to start governing your body and your ability to pay attention and remember. And when you can do those things, you can get a lot more confidence about prospect prospecting. Now for anybody who's never done sales, prospecting is where you make phone calls or network or find people who are potential customers for you. And it's part of having a business. And you know what a lot of people do when they start a business is they don't want to deal with that part. And they even will say formally, I don't want to do it. You, you're taking, you're accepting that it has to be done. But Jacob, could I just say that sometimes a partner or an employee to do your sales for you, your prospecting for you could possibly be a great fit. Salespeople will sometimes work on commission, <laughs> which is cool. So if they can sit there and do the prospecting part and you can do the follow through and deliver the service that you provide, I don't know exactly what you do, but not everybody's cut out to be the salesperson and that's okay. A lot of people don't realize that going into business or being a contractor or a consultant, that about half your work roughly, unless you're famous, <laughs> which who is, it's going to be like trying to find customers. And a lot of people with trauma really trip up around this one because it takes so much confidence. You know, some people have kind of like a mask that they can wear, a false self to go out there and go, hey, I can provide this really good service. It's high quality, it's good pricing. You can talk to me about it. Some people that comes naturally, but it doesn't come naturally to everybody. And so I really recommend that you do your research. You don't need any more coaches or anything expensive. There's this thing called YouTube. I, I started up my second business entirely learned from YouTube. I learned the whole thing from YouTube. You can learn a lot there. But learning how, um, how people do the communication and appear confident and have charisma, say the things that lead to a sale. I think half of the procrastination and lack of confidence around that has to do with being too frozen a lot of the time to have done adequate research to know how to do it. I mean, everybody knows a little bit how to do it, but really how to do it. And uh, I, I, when I coach a lot of people who are business people and who are entrepreneurs or, you know, they have a, they're solopreneurs. And this is a big issue for almost everybody. And they want to avoid it. They want to minimize it. They want to believe they already know something, but I promise you, you can learn from YouTube also from books. There's very good business books about how to do this. And, um, they help me to realize like, of course I can't do every job. And after a while in a business, you start to realize which job are you. A book that was world changing for me is called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. I loved that book. And what it helped me understand is that in starting up any business, you wear all the hats and gradually you don't wear all the hats. That the only way you're ever going to be able to grow the business is to be able to start bringing in other people to wear some of the other hats. 
And so I'm guessing because of your coaching, you do know all of this, but I think a lot of coaching, it's not really well targeted for people who have complex PTSD. You got what you got from the coaching. So good. You know, that knowledge is in there right now. It's time to get out of freeze mode. The number one thing that is recommended for people in freeze mode is to go outside and move around. And so what's interesting is that one of your traumatic experiences was having to clear this like half mile drive of brush and trees in July heat, which sounds like torture. It does sound like torture. And so I don't know what you do right now, but going outside in and doing something that gives you joy, hopefully getting some nature, getting a little sunlight and moving your body is how you can get out of freeze mode. A lot of us benefit from having a morning routine and the morning routine is something that I teach in my dysregulation boot camp. Um, you can find a link to that down below in the description section. So freeze mode is one aspect of nervous system dysregulation. It's one aspect. Now all of us are capable of going into multiple trauma responses. Sometimes we fight, sometimes we freeze, we fawn, we're like, please like me, or we run away, but we often have a dominant one. So this is the one hurting you. Everybody can benefit from learning to re-regulate their nervous system. And so what I encourage you to do is learn about dysregulation, learn about it, start working on very simple things that you can do. They don't cost any money. You can um, wash your hands in very cold water. You can walk around outside. You can bang your feet one, left, right, left, right. You can press your tongue to the roof of your mouth. These are easy tips to just start bringing yourself into regulation. You can take five deep breaths or use box breathing where you breathe in for a certain measure, hold for a certain measure, exhale for a measure, hold for a measure, breathe in. All of these things can start bringing your nervous system back online. For some people, it is group activities. Now, somehow I get the feeling that you're very isolated in your work. So I really am going to encourage you to find a way to connect with other people, whether it's to go to an um, adult children of alcoholics and other dysfunctional families, 12 step meeting, good way to make, make friends or another 12 step meeting, or in some way connect with community, especially with men, especially with business people, people who get it, people who are working these same challenges. It's a completely different game sitting at your desk, thinking in your head about what you're going to do versus connecting with other people and sharing with them what you're going to do. The window opens, the oxygen comes in, good things can begin to happen. There needs to be nervous system alignment and a sense of positive connection to goals that you would like to have in your life. So, you know, having a business and having it be successful is a great joy, not to mention the financial benefits that help make life so much easier. So Jacob, I hope you'll do those things. And if you need help, come on into my dysregulation boot camp. It's easy. It's fun. If you like it, you can become a member at crappy childhood fairy and there you'll find a lot of people who are also working to heal their dysregulation and friends who are working through their freeze mode too. I tell you what, I'll put a link to the dysregulation boot camp right here and I will see you very soon. <laughs>